With over 20 million produced, the Volkswagen Beetle is one of the most popular cars ever. And strangely, apparently that mass production only started because of Hitler. Anyway, it looks very similar to the Chrysler Airflow, which we found to be really low drag, but did the Beetle inherit its aerodynamics too, or did it lose its streamlinedness along the way? Let's find out. From this plane, the flow stays very well attached over the roof, despite the roof being so curved. Only once you reach below the rear window do you get some flow separation, but the flow then sucks back in and surprisingly flows in between the car and the rear bumper instead of just engulfing the large bumper in a large wake. Given how much the air flows down, it isn't surprising that the Beetle has a lift coefficient of 0.125. The front windscreen isn't very good because it is too upright, and the flow just comes along, hits it, and needs to redirect too much. In addition, the angle between the hood and the windshield is too sharp, which causes the flow to recirculate here, which also increases the drag. But because the front is so rounded, the flow travels over it very well, and that reduces how much energy the flow is dumping into the car at this point. And surprisingly, the front bumper isn't nearly as unaerodynamic as it looks, because the flow just moves around around it, a little flow separation occurs. One thing that could be improved is how the front extends down past the underbody height. That causes a sharp edge and a subsequent wake. The rest of the underbody is very impressive though, with the flow staying nicely attached. This underbody is better than some modern cars. And one major feature that the Beetle is lacking is a diffuser at the back, which given how well the underbody flow is, a diffuser would have been perfect here. How does the flow look from on top though? From this view, the flow is very impressive. We get a really good appreciation of just how well the air flows around the front and rear bumpers, despite them being so clunky. The wheel arches are also pretty good, especially given how cumbersome they are. Despite that, the flow still stays attached around them. If anything, they could be smoothed a little to reduce how much the flow accelerates around the edges as seen by the red streamlines. Back is fantastic though, with the air flowing around the car's taper very well, leaving very little wake. Looking higher up, we can see just how bad the front windshield is with so much flow crashing into it and a very large recirculation zone forming. This is really the only bad part of the car. Everything else seems either pretty good or really good. And having only one side mirror cuts down the wake a little, so that's good too. At the back, we see three low velocity regions. The middle one is the minor wake that forms near the bottom of the rear window, but the ones on the sides, I don't think that they are so much wakes, but more vortices coming from the C pillars, the pillars at the back. But let's look at the vortices to see if in fact they are. And yes, we can see that they are in fact vortices from the C pillars. They come about because the C pillars are too upright, and if they were slanted more, the flow wouldn't roll up as much around them. From these vortices, we also see that there are a lot of vortices being shed from the rear. Many of these are because the Beetle is producing a lot of lift, so the flow from under the car is bleeding over and rolling up into vortices in a similar fashion to wingtip vortices. We can also see that the wheel arches are producing a lot of vortices, and that is because they are too accentuated. Turning them down would reduce a lot of these vortices. Let's see how these features impact the drag. As expected, there is quite a lot of drag coming from the wheel itself, particularly near the contact patch, but the wheel arches are producing even more drag than the wheels themselves, which is quite rare to see. The A pillars are also producing some notable drag, and the C pillars are too, which is because of the vortices they create. The rear of the car is where most of the drag is being produced though, as expected, and there is also some drag being formed around the front of the windshield that then rolls around the base of the front windows. It has a drag coefficient of 0.45, which is really good for the time, but does the Chrysler airflow dirty? Peace out, amigos.